लेटेस्ट वीडियो देखने के लिए इस चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और सबसे पहले वीडियो देखने के लिए बेल बटन को दबाएं FGD power plant flue gas desulfurization FGD is a set of technologies used to remove sulfur dioxide SO2 from exhaust flue gases of fossil fuel power plants as well as from the emissions of other sulfur oxide emitting processes Sulfuric acid mist formation. Fossil fuels such as coal and oil can contain a significant amount of sulfur. When fossil fuels are burned, about 95% or more of the sulfur is generally converted to sulfur dioxide, SO2. Such conversion happens under normal conditions of temperature and of oxygen present in the flue gas. However, there are circumstances under which such reaction may not occur. When flue gas has too much oxygen, the SO2 further oxidizes into sulfur trioxide, SO3. Too much oxygen is only one of the ways that SO3 is formed. Gas temperature is also an important factor. At about 800 degrees Celsius, formation of SO3 is favored. Another way that SO3 can be formed is through catalysis by metals in the fuel. Such reaction is particularly true for heavy fuel oil, where a significant amount of vanadium is present. In whatever way SO3 is formed, it does not behave like SO2 in that it forms a liquid aerosol known as sulfuric acid, H2SO4, mist that is very difficult to remove. Generally, about 1% of the sulfur dioxide will be converted to SO3. Sulfuric acid mist is often the cause of the blue haze that often appears as the flue gas plume dissipates. Increasingly, this problem is being addressed by the use of wet electrostatic precipitators. FGD Chemistry Basic Principles Most FGD systems employ two stages. One one for fly ash removal. Two other for SO2 removal. Attempts have been made to remove both the fly ash and SO2 in one scrubbing vessel. However, these systems experienced severe maintenance problems and low removal efficiency. In wet scrubbing systems, the flue gas normally passes first through a fly ash removal device either an electrostatic precipitator and then into the SO2 absorber. However, in dry injection or spray drying operations, the SO2 is first reacted with the lime, and then the flue gas passes through a particulate control device. Another important design consideration associated with wet FGD systems is that the flue gas exiting the absorber is saturated with water and still contains some SO2. These gases are highly corrosive to any downstream equipment such as fans ducts, and stacks. Two methods that may minimize corrosion are 
1. Reheating the gases to above their dew point. Or 2. Using materials of construction and designs that allow equipment to withstand the corrosive conditions. Both alternatives are expensive. Engineers determine which method to use on a site-by-site -site basis. Schematic design of the absorber of an FGD. Scrubbing with an alkali solid or solution. SO2 is an acid gas, and, therefore, the typical sorbent slurries or other materials used to remove the SO2 from the flue gases are alkaline. The reaction taking place in wet scrubbing using a COCO3, limestone, slurry produces calcium sulfite, COSO3. When wet scrubbing with a CaO2, hydrated lime, slurry, the reaction also produces COSO3, calcium sulfite. When wet scrubbing with a MgO2, magnesium hydroxide, slurry, the reaction produces MgO3, magnesium sulfite. To partially offset the cost of the FGD installation, some designs, particularly dry sorbent injection systems, further oxidize the COSO3, calcium sulfite, to produce marketable COSO4 to H2O, gypsum, that can be of high enough quality to use in wallboard and other products. The process by which this synthetic gypsum is created is also known as forced oxidation. Types of wet scrubbers used in FGD To promote maximum gas liquid surface area and residence time, a number of wet scrubber designs have been used, including spray towers, ventress, plate towers, and mobile packed beds. Because of scale buildup, plugging, or erosion, which affect FGD dependability and absorber efficiency, the trend is to use simple scrubbers such as spray towers instead of more complicated ones. The configuration of the tower may be vertical or horizontal, and flue gas can flow co-currently, counter-currently, or cross-currently with respect to the liquid. The chief drawback of spray towers is that they require a higher liquid-to-gas ratio requirement for equivalent SO2 removal than other absorber designs. FGD scrubbers produce a scaling wastewater that requires treatment to meet discharge regulations. However, technological advancements in ion exchange membranes and electrodialysis systems has enabled high-efficiency treatment of FGD wastewater to meet recent EPA discharge limits. The treatment approach is similar for other highly scaling industrial wastewaters. Venturi Rod Scrubbers A Venturi scrubber is a converging, diverging section of duct. The converging section accelerates the gas stream to high velocity. When the liquid stream is injected at the throat, which is the point of maximum velocity, the turbulence caused by the high gas velocity atomizes the liquid into small droplets, which creates the surface area necessary for mass transfer to take place. The higher the pressure drop in the venturi, the smaller the droplets and the higher the surface area. The penalty is in power consumption. For simultaneous removal of SO2 and fly ash, venturi scrubbers can be used. In fact, many of the industrial sodium-based throwaway systems are venturi scrubbers originally designed to remove particulate matter. These units were slightly modified to inject a sodium-based scrubbing liquor. Although removal of both particles and SO2 in one vessel can be economic, the problems of high pressure drops and finding a scrubbing medium to remove heavy loadings of fly ash must be considered. However, in cases where the particle concentration is low, such as from oil-fired units, it can be more effective to remove particulate and SO2 simultaneously. Packed Bed Scrubbers A packed scrubber consists of a tower with packing material inside. This packing material can be in the shape of saddles, rings, or some highly specialized shapes designed to maximize the contact area between the dirty gas and liquid. Packed towers typically operate at much lower pressure drops than venturi scrubbers and are therefore cheaper to operate. They also typically offer higher SO2 removal efficiency. The drawback is that they have a greater tendency to plug up if particles are present in excess in the exhaust air stream. Spray Towers A spray tower is the simplest type of scrubber. It consists of a tower with spray nozzles, which generate the droplets for surface contact. Spray towers are typically used when circulating a slurry, see below. The high speed of a venturi would cause erosion problems, while a packed tower would plug up if it tried to circulate a slurry. Countercurrent packed towers are infrequently used because they have a tendency to become plugged by collected particles or to scale when lime or limestone scrubbing slurries are used. Cross Current Flow Spray Tower Typical countercurrent flow spray tower. Scrubbing reagent. 
As explained above, alkaline sorbents are used for scrubbing flue gases to remove SO2. Depending on the application, the two most important are lime and sodium hydroxide, also known as caustic soda. Lime is typically used on large coal or oil fired boilers as found in power plants, as it is very much less expensive than caustic soda. The problem is that it results in a slurry being circulated through the scrubber instead of a solution. This makes it harder on the equipment. A spray tower is typically used for this application. The use of lime results in a slurry of calcium sulfite, CASO3, that must be disposed of. Fortunately, calcium sulfite can be oxidized to produce byproduct gypsum, CASO4, 2H2O, which is marketable for use in the building products industry. Caustic soda is limited to smaller combustion units because it is more expensive than lime, but it has the advantage that it forms a solution rather than a slurry. This makes it easier to operate. It produces a spent caustic solution of sodium sulfite, bisulfite, depending on the pH, or sodium sulfate that must be disposed of. This is not a problem in a craft pulp mill for example, where this can be a source of makeup chemicals to the recovery cycle. Scrubbing with sodium sulfite solution. It is possible to scrub sulfur dioxide by using a cold solution of sodium sulfite, this forms a sodium hydrogen sulfite solution. By heating this solution it is possible to reverse the reaction to form sulfur dioxide and the sodium sulfite solution. Since the sodium sulfite solution is not consumed, it is called a regenerative treatment. The application of this reaction is on is also known as the Wellman-Lord process. In some ways this can be thought of as being similar to the reversible liquid-liquid extraction of an inert gas such as xenon or radon, or some other solute which does not undergo a chemical change during the extraction, from water to another phase. While a chemical change does occur during the extraction of the sulfur dioxide from the gas mixture, it is the case that the extraction equilibrium is shifted by changing the temperature rather than by the use of a chemical reagent. Gas phase oxidation followed by reaction with ammonia. A new, emerging flue gas desulfurization technology has been described by the IAEA. It is a radiation technology where an intense beam of electrons is fired into the flue gas at the same time as ammonia is added to the gas. The Chengdu power plant in China started up such a flue gas desulfurization unit on a 100 MW scale in 1998. The Pomorzyny power plant in Poland also started up a similar sized unit in 2003 and that plant removes both sulfur and nitrogen oxides. Both plants are reported to be operating successfully. However, the accelerator design principles and manufacturing quality need further improvement for continuous operation in industrial conditions. No radioactivity is required or created in the process. The electron beam is generated by a device similar to the electron gun in a TV set. This device is called an accelerator. This is an example of a radiation chemistry process where the physical effects of radiation are used to process a substance. The action of the electron beam is to promote the oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur VI compounds. The ammonia reacts with the sulfur compounds thus formed to produce ammonium sulfate, which can be used as a nitrogenous fertilizer. In addition, it can be used to lower the nitrogen oxide content of the flue gas. This method has attained industrial plant scale. Useful information. The highest SO2 removal efficiencies, greater than 90%, are achieved by wet scrubbers and the lowest, less than 80%, by dry scrubbers. However, the newer designs for dry scrubbers are capable of achieving efficiencies in the order of 90%. Different FGD designs. Yeah.